has finally come. We are going to learn how to use EXWM. The first time I mm, realized that you can use Emacs as a full-on usable uh, window manager for X Windows, so you can have your browser run inside Emacs and behave like a buffer. You can have your your chat client, your I don't know, maybe you use some GUI software for music or whatever else. It's all going to run to Emacs, and Emacs will be full screen. It's going to have workspaces. Each workspace will have a list of buffers. It's, it's awesome, but it's um, it's kind of I wouldn't really say it's difficult to set up. But um, unless you actually know how to set up a desktop entry file, so a dot desktop um, file, and you know where to put it, it can be slightly discouraging. Uh, especially because right now I have no. So if I was to relog, like not close, but actually log out, I am going to have a little prompt where I can select the desktop environment uh, to use. Now desktop environments are uh, specified for like GTM, LightDM, all the desktop managers. They just read desktop files from users that share X sessions. So let's try and do that. Let's let's see how it happens. I'm going to actually launch a terminal here. I'm going to become root and I'm going to do or I'll go to user share x sessions. I have GNOME Classic, GNOME Desktop and GNOME Zork. That's kinda cute. Um I wonder if I'm going to run to issues because of GNOME. I hope not. I'm going to create a new file, call it emacs.desktop. And, oh boy, oh boy, I'm going to use nano for it. All we have to do is create, this is pretty much a .ini file. This is um, something you, you know of. So we'll create a desktop entry, the name will be Emacs. This is basically what just what's going to be displayed. This isn't the executable or anything, so we can call it whatever you want, you can call it .exwm. Big comment, you know, I don't know. <sighs> Emacs is awesome. Whatever, I don't think the comments displayed in GDM. Exec, the one line that actually matters. Um, exec Emacs. And type. It's going to be application. Um, I'm relatively sure that this is all. Okay, let's write this, close this. We have not set up EXWM yet. Okay. Let's, I just want to see what happens. I'm pretty sure it just launches Emacs. And. Wait, hang on. I killed it. I killed it? No, I did not. I was already afraid. Now you can click on here, select app exwm. Does this even have a password? Apparently it does. Okay. Um, wow, Emacs, <laughs> um, it only has Emacs though, but it doesn't, doesn't do anything. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah that, that's it, that's, that's sadly all there is to it. Now we have actually, we can do everything else from here, we don't actually need to go back to know. Uh, how do you resize windows? Can I even resize this? Can I even move this? Oh god, I don't think I can. Whatever. <laughs> okay, so let's let's edit our configuration file. And let's add all the things we need. So after the minor settings, let's add EXWM. Okay, there will be some code here. I always forget we have the snippet. What we need to do is actually quite easy. We have to use package EXWM. Um, ensure that it's installed and the only configuration we need actually is no we need to require because we are going to be using some default settings we need to require exwm config and exwm config default i think this is going to be enough at first okay so yeah let's get out of there save it reload it and this might actually take a while because it needs some xcb um, libraries. Luckily, they are all um, ported to Lisp. So, let's 
so okay let's let's close this if we do we should go back to our um yeah the gdm why is this so slow okay let's see if this works better now should go full screen um it does it works it actually actually worked i am amazed okay so what's the big deal um i'm going to show you what the big deal is Allow me for some um let me enable screen key does screen fetch really come pre-installed in ontergos really uh, let's enable screen key and so you can see what i'm okay screen key doesn't work beautiful <laughs> what the hell um, let's do stuff firefox but you see the boat line is it's still there because this is now running inside of emacs uh, with super actually why doesn't screen key work Whatever, you already learned all the important key bindings anyways. So the concept is, we now have workspaces. Each workspace has buffers. There is um, line mode and there's the character mode. And that's all you need to know, really. Now, what do I mean by workspaces? The super key and the number is going to go to a workspace. By default, you have workspace 0, 1, 2, and 3. Um, so this is workspace 0, I'm on 0 right now, this is workspace 1, and workspace 2, workspace 3, 4 is in there, so it's going to get created, and I can say open a file here, uh, I always miss it, and I'm on workspace 4 right now, I can, oh no, hit super 0, do something in Firefox, switch back to this workspace, it's like buffers, but there is numbers to them, and some people don't really use the workspace uh, functionality of EXWM. I like it, because I'm used to window managers with a lot of workspaces. I always have um, my browser on the first one, chat client on the second one, IRC on the third one, and so on and so forth. Now, there's a few things we need to do to make this more usable, though. Well, first of all, the menu actually works now, as you just saw. You can totally do like Control XP, and you'll see there is a buffer called Firefox. Mode EXLTM. You can kill it like a normal buffer, and you know, it's just there. It's pretty awesome. Um, so, yeah, there is the issue. Well, it's not really an issue, but Super Space actually, you know, launches stuff now. So, there's that. But the issue is we don't have a system tray. Maybe use software that needs a system tray. So let's go to the fourth workspace. Let's enable the system tray because it it actually can be done. There is one that's built in. So uh, how do I do this again? All I need to do is like require exwm system tray, I think. And then all I have to do is enable it. I'm doing this. Um, you know, I'm just winging it. I hope everything works. Yeah, it is, this, this is going to work. The system tray, um, by default, it shows up in this corner. Um, so yeah, and the bottom right. So, <laughs> yeah, honestly, that's, that's the XWM. There is some key bindings that I really like that I'm going to share with you. One of them being um, actually deleting workspaces because sometimes I have too many workspaces because I misclick and hit like super 9 and then it's going to create 10 workspaces. Uh, so, you know, I'm going to just set a key binding for it. Key binding being, um, I like super and k for it. There's a function called exwm workspace delete. The other one that I really like is swapping workspaces. Sometimes I'll open uh, my browser on the wrong workspace so I can just swap the workspaces around. It's very easy to do. I'll show you how to do that in just a sec. I use SW for it. Yeah, again, just bind it to whatever. Um, bind it to whatever you like. 
let's reload this and I'll show you what I mean. Let me go to workspace 0 and I like having this on the first workspace so I'll do super w xmw uh, instead of xwm crap uh, why why me oops xwm so let's reload this when it's done okay s or super w pick a workspace and we'll hit one and then hit enter to swap it with the current one and now it's the first workspace when I hit super 1 it's on the first one and 0 is now replaced with what was on the well, first one so we can go back to our fourth workspace as you can see it's still there we can kill it doing um, just super K we kill it to this one kill this one as well Let's not kill this one, we can go to the 0 of 1. If we kill the 0 of 1, the first one is going to become the 0 of 1. They just jump back when you delete ones, you know, before actual active workspaces. If that makes any sense. It's actually surpri it's surprisingly fast. Um, like XWM that is. It's very, very convenient to be able to use, you know, keybinds that you're used to, to manage X windows. I don't really have a lot of X windows open at all times. My browser being the one thing that I have open. And that's about it. Uh, use learning to use workspaces. Um, very, very handy, very convenient. Again, this is like an edge case. Many people using Emacs. They want to use Emacs for everything. And I'm one of those people. I use Emacs for virtually everything. I have Emacs, or I have EXWM set up. I think the next video I'm going to actually record on my laptop. Um, my laptop setup is very similar to this. Um, the difference being, everything is very much more polished. Okay? And I actually have like all the XF86 keys um, enabled, and they're all bound to like, you know, volume up, volume down, next song, because. Sooner or later, we also talk about how to set up a actually working MPD setup with, and then use Emacs as a client for it. This this is actually quite a feat, really. It took me a while. It's not as easy as it looks, and I have like keys set up to like lock the screen, um, power off, raise and lower volumes, and all that jazz. So. So yeah, I guess that's about it. If you actually want to use this, which I would highly recommend because it's a lot of fun, it's very fast, it's very snappy, you know, if you, you know all these key bindings and all. Uh, one thing that you need to learn, if you open a terminal for instance, uh, let me type stuff, I want to go back, and it works fine. Now, if I want to go up, if I do, um, let's say I want to copy the word command. If I do control P, I'm going to be using or passing control P to bash. Bash by default uses some uh, key bindings that Emacs uses. So doing this, you know, I can move around. I'm using NNP to jump between commands right now. If I switch the mode to line mode, I can now move around this buffer as if it was nothing. Copy, I can yank, I can do whatever I want. I can, uh, well, I really can do whatever the hell I want. Switch back to character mode, and I am interacting with the program. So if you have, for instance, if you have a browser, if you're facing issues with key bindings, switch to character mode. Everything you do then will not be parsed by Emacs, but instead will be sent directly, um, directly to the actual program that you're using. I also highly recommend getting a composite manager. There is one that's built into EXWM, but it's garbage. So use like Compton or something. You don't really need a launcher because you have the built-in D menu. Well, not built-in, but the one we installed. Um, you know, you might want to have some other settings. Put them in the configuration file. But yeah, EXWM is it's a thing and it works very well. I think from the next video on, you know, everything you're going to see will be in AX.UM and we will take a look at some awesome stuff. So, we will actually, I am considering 
of starting a series on ELISP and a series on org mode. But I have no I have no user base or no viewer base right now. Most of my videos don't have a single view, which is fine, because you know I just uploaded them yesterday and you know world domination and being the next Logan Paul is not on my goal list. So when I gain a few viewers, I'm probably going to start making videos on ELISP or well, Lisp and, and then transition to ELISP. I also want to make some videos, like a short series, like a 5-6 video series on org mode. Because there is a lot to talk about, but you can actually condense all this information into a few bits. Uh, yeah, I've got a lot of to do. And from the next video on, will be on my laptop. I'm going to be screencasting using FFmpeg instead of using OBS. I hope this is going to improve the quality and you know, I think it's going to be more fun this way. Thanks for watching. I hope you give EXWM a try. It doesn't hurt to try, by the way. Oh, and as a side note, if you are not using a desktop manager, then all you have to do is create a file called .xinitrc and put xxpspwm in there, so you can do something like, um, yeah, I thought it's going to <laughs> electric pairs mode, right? xx, emacs, did I say pspwm just before? Did I say exwm? No, it's xx emacs, actually, and you have to you know, write it to xinitrc, that's it. Then you can, um, in your TTY, in your virtual console, you can just type in start X and it's going to run. And if it doesn't, then you have to install X in it. Oh god. Didn't we get rid of this? Did we not get rid of the running process thing? Oh god. This is so buggy. It doesn't do that for my own setup. This is weird. Maybe I just need to, you know, restart or something. Alright, thank you for watching. I hope you stay tuned. There is a little bit more to talk about for Emacs. Not much more. Or what, there is a crap load of things to talk about, but I'm not going to, like, cover extreme edge cases for some packages like one person out of 10,000 is going to be used for. I'll see you in the next video. Hope you stay tuned. Thank you and bye-bye.